Juliana Richardson didn't intend to serve as a gatekeeper of African-American history, but her life's journey led her to that result. The idea began forming in grade school while exploring origin stories. It was just an epiphany because I, as a black person, had a history that I didn't know anything about. She grew up in a small Ohio town with an even smaller African-American community. She attended Brandeis University and combined her love for the theater with American studies. She spent endless hours in the library studying little told stories of African-Americans that she was amazed to hear. Looking back became her guiding force to forge ahead before starting what was to become the largest African-American video oral history in the United States, she graduated from Harvard Law School, worked as a corporate lawyer at Jenner & Block, headed a cable channel, and started one of the first home shopping networks called Shop Chicago. However, none of this sustained her creatively. A revelation came while at the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis that changed the course of her life. She knew the story of Martin Luther King Jr., but was unaware of the other men and women in the fight for freedom. A yearning to know more inspired her to build a home for the often untold and overlooked stories of African Americans. The History Makers Archive shares the stories of African Americans from Pullman Porters to Tuskegee Airmen, from Negro League baseball players to NASA scientists and paints the story of African-American life, experience, and culture. According to Richardson, none of this would have happened if she hadn't moved to Chicago. I really do not think that I could have started this project in a place not Chicago. I'm internally grateful and want to give back to Chicago in the way that it gave me. What the archives gave to the world is profound. Most of the, the nation's libraries and museums and archives are missing the black narrative. After 20 plus years, Juliana Richardson indeed has created her own legacy and has become a history maker herself. Sometimes an oral history project takes the history world by storm. We think of the work of Studs Terkel and everything he did here in Chicago. He's the father of oral history. We think of Steven Spielberg and his Shoah project, which captured the stories of the Holocaust survivors. And we think of today's awardee, Juliana Richardson, founder of History Makers, the nation's largest African-American video oral history collection. She was born in Pittsburgh, and Juliana got the history bug during a college project on Langston Hughes from the Harlem Renaissance. Then came Juliana's professional life with twists and turns, but it turns out that each part of her professional life set her up for founding history makers. As a lawyer, she practiced in the corporate business area, but be she became an advocate. She turned to media work. She did cable and TV production. That served her well. And then she also was an entrepreneur, actually creating startup. Put it all together, advocacy, media, entrepreneurship, and History Makers was born. Born because more than anything else, Juliana has the classic mindset of a founder. She saw something that was missing and she resolved that she was the one who was gonna make it happen. History, move over. Here comes Juliana. Now the secret to oral history projects is that you have to do something more than preserving and sharing records. You have to create records that otherwise would not exist. I met Juliana first in 2005, and she was hard at work doing just that, creating records that n did not already exist. I was amazed that six years into this project already, she was absolutely surrounded 
by her recordings. She was working in a very sophisticated way on the media. I remember she was working with Carnegie Mellon University on how to do searches involving key words. Put in Selma, for example, and you would find all the places and all these records that someone had used the word Selma. She was truly ahead of her time. But what I learned at that time was the real secret of oral history in creating those records. What I learned was it takes very special skills to convince a person to share a personal story, and Juliana has those skills. It takes a deep sense of caring to assure an interviewee that those personal stories will be safeguarded, they'll be protected, especially in a social media world these days where so much can happen that actually can debase stories. Juliana has that deep sense of caring. It takes the loving kindness of a parent, both with the giants of history and with the everyday heroes, to reassure them that all will be well with their stories. And Juliana has that loving kindness. So far, over 2,000 individuals have embraced Juliana Richardson and the History Makers Project. The Chicago History Museum, with the deepest sense of admiration and gratitude, is proud to present the John Hope Franklin Making History Award for Historical Scholarship to Juliana Richardson. Oh my God, thanks Gary T. Johnson for that wonderful introduction. It was very, very important to me and the greatest of honors that you be the one to introduce me, for ours has been a very special 16-year relationship. Tonight, as we say in the black community, I'm in high cotton with two of Chicago's fi finest, Ryan Sandberg, Hall of Famer, baseball legend, and Ken Griffin, businessman and philanthropist extraordinaire. I want to extend a special shout out to James Alexander, our supporter David Hillier, and history makers Ralph Moore, who serve on the board, and trustee emeritus um, Libet Richter and Sally Gaines. I also want to extend the warmest of welcomes, most importantly, to, Chicago, to the new head of the Chicago History Museum, Don Donald Lesseur a fellow recovering lawyer, and now head of this august institution. I welcome you to Chicago and look forward to working with you. My relationship with the museum goes back to the founding of the History Makers 21 years ago, when we were just an idea, formed on the advice and counsel of Archibald Motley and the ongoing sage input and advice of Russell Lewis inspired also by the works of Studs Terkel and the respectful recordings that honored the likes of black le legends like Mahalia Jackson and Oscar Brown and Louis Armstrong and, and Marian Anderson and others when be being black was anything but popular, maybe only curious. I would seek the advice and counsel of then head of the Chicago History Museum, Doug Greenberg, who went on to head Steven Spielberg Shoah Foundation, and Lonnie Bunch, now the founding director of the, Nash, of the Smithsonian Institution. But the relationship with Gary Johnson, as I said, had been a special one of true respect and mutual admiration. Both lawyers sharing alma maters, coming together to share ideas and concepts cheering our progress at each and every step, something that I will be forever grateful for. Our last meeting in his office, we were like children, regaling at the story of how the History Museum is now the proud repository of the Chicago Sun-Times Prize Photo Archives. You see, I came to Chicago 41 years ago 
This great city has become my home. There is no other city in the United States that could have inspired me, served as our breeding ground, the launching pad for the history makers, for as you have heard, I was once this nine-year-old kid in an all-white, small Midwestern town who wanted so much for her sense of identity and one that she could call her own. I found that here, and I wanted to record and bring forth thousands of uh, stories of African-American achievers alive with state-of-the-art technology for the world to see and experience. So for me to be honored in the same year that the Library of Congress, which serves as our permanent repository, gleefully spoke earlier this year of the magnificence of our collections means more than what you will ever know. To be receiving this John Hope Franklin Award, named in honor of the greatest of our American scholars, conjures up memories of me traveling to Raleigh-Durham, surrounded by his wonderful orchids and the presence in this larger-than-life legacy when he patiently listened to my dream, only sending me away, not yet agreeing to be supportive, but later becoming one of our most ardent supporters. And then to be standing in the legacy of the Making History awardees, the ones who have come before me. Some of them have been wonderful supporters and others are history makers whose stories are housed in our archives. There is no doubt that we live in challenging times, but these times also as we come forward from this worldwide pandemic can also be a pathway to our future and the opportunity to put forward and highlight the stories of the African American experience. We have seen over the last few years with technicolor cell phone coverage the world of the black community that few knew. It is a world that we often now are taking people inside the lives of black people. I hope that our work with the museum will continue. I know it will. And so tonight, in honor of my late father, the golf instructor, Julius Laconia Richardson, who is my namesake, in honor of my 91-year-old mother, Margaret Richardson, who still climbs our, our stairs and answers our phone. In honor of a great board of directors and a hardworking staff, and a special shout out to my chief of staff, Zhu Sun, my project director, Courtney Sharif, and my videographer who is here with me, as always, Matthew Hickey. In honor of all of those who have volunteered and supported us, you don't know what that support has meant. But tonight, I take special honor and delight that the main historic music, history institution in this town has seen fit to make me one of theirs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The 27th Annual Making History Awards are generously underwritten by Bartlett Beck, The Crown Family, GCM Grosvenor, Andy and Jim Gordon, Judy and Leonard Lauder, Pritzker Foundation, Patrick G. and Shirley W. Ryan, Sidley, Trot Family Philanthropies, Abbott, Adam Street Partners, Bon and Holly French, the Bloom Family Charitable Foundation, Anna and Greg Brown, Janet and Craig Duchessoy, Michael and Jackie Farrow, Mary and Paul Finnegan, David Hero and Jay Frankie, Freed Frank, Matt Gibson Goldman Sachs, ITW, J. Christopher and Anne N. Reyes Foundation, Lori and Jude Reyes, Robert R. McCormick Foundation, 
John W. and Jean M. Rowe, Julie and Brian Simmons, Jennifer Staines and Jim Kastenholtz, Robin Staines and Leonard Gale, Liz Stiffel, Tawani, and the Wilson Garling Foundation. Congratulations and thanks to all of tonight's honorees for your valuable contributions to Chicago.